So if everybody see the, the sheets out there and, and you know who's in your NF group for this year, raise your hand if you, you know is in your NF group, your I told you to do something on the sheet. Okay. Okay, all right. So there are sheets out there if you need, you need one of those, you can grab those, they'll be there. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about NF groups, why we do this and why why it's important. Just so you know, this decision to start the NF groups, this uh I, I remember sitting in my office with Pastor Key and, and Fred. And we were talking about how, um, you know, some people might come to to a youth group and have stuff that's on on your hearts. Well, there's not really a good time of the night to openly share that with a big group. It's, you know, I mean, I suppose you could raise your hand and ask for prayer anytime. Well, when you got heavier stuff that's on your hearts, um, it's better in a smaller group. You know, it's, it's safer. And so that's that's what the NF groups are there to be for. They're they're. A chance for you to go deeper with somebody, get to know somebody a little deeper than the rest of the group. You can't be super close with everybody, especially in a group of 35, 40 people. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about it, and then we'll, we'll start. i uh, got a little challenge at the end of the night slash game that you'll do in your NF groups. And then next week, we'll actually start meeting in the NF groups like, like normal. So let's see. Bevin, could you uh, switch it over for my PowerPoint? All right, sweet. So, okay. All right. So, okay, I think, so the NF groups are only going to be 20 minutes of the night for this year. Last year, they were 30 minutes of the night. This, this year, they'll be 20 minutes of the night. So it might seem like a small little part of the night. Most of the night will be together. But I think it's probably like probably 20 of the most valuable minutes of the night. So I hope that you, like don't think it's just because I'm like reducing the time. It's like because I think they're not important. I think probably that the 20 minutes in NF group might be some of the most important 20 minutes of the night. Um, so basically, I've got a verse up there. It's, it's John 10:10, 10, 10. and we have an enemy in the Christian life, right? We've got the Holy Spirit who's on our side. Actually, I better leave it like this because the screen's not totally full yet. Um, who's our enemy in the Christian life? Yeah, go ahead, Marvelous. Yeah, Satan. There's also two other enemies that the Bible lists. Does anybody know? What's up, Aiden? Welcome, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, can I, yeah you could, I, should, I should name that one. Yeah, go ahead, Russell. Well, yeah, that one was already saying. Anybody know what the two other ones are? If you haven't, and, and you're not a leader and you haven't been to seminary. <laughs> Satan, normally the flesh. And we're going to talk about that actually in a couple weeks from now. The flesh is the, I, I call it your dragon. It's the parasite, the part that we have, every person has inside of them. I call it, like, you can think of it like a parasite. You know what a parasite is? Like a little worm or something that's like in there and it's like living inside you. It's, it's not you, but it's in you and it messes with you and it interface. It'll affect the way you feel, it can affect the way you think if it's a cerebral parasite. So yeah, we, um, we have this parasite living in us. Ever since Adam and Eve took that bite out of that apple, sin came into the world and entered the human race. And it lives inside of us. It's in, in Greek, it's the sarks. In the old translations, it says the flesh. I think some of the newer translations, you guys probably read NIV, it says the sin nature. Okay? But it's the part that lives inside of us that, that is pulled toward evil all the time. And even me, I've got one as a pastor. But like Every Christian has this? Yes. So if you know, you're, you know that you have one this age. Um, we, we all have one. It's pull, it pulls us towards evil. So that's another enemy that we live with. It li- lives inside of us. But Satan is outside of us. The flesh is inside of us. And the other enemy would be the world. But I want to talk about Satan a little bit. Um, John 10.10 10 is really explicit about his goal. And check it out. It's right there on the screen. The thief. He's called the, this is Jesus talking. He calls Satan the thief here. All he cares about is three things. Steal, kill, and destroy. And he doesn't care about destroying the plants or the animals. Of all the creatures that are in creation, he, see, see, Satan hates God. Like, it's not like the fun hatred that's like cool to watch on a sitcom or like Archer. Like, he hates him in a, like a deep, dark, cynical, like if, if I could just cause you pain and twist pain into you, I would. Like, he hates God with, with a passion. And because God loves us with a passion, the way Satan gets back at God is coming after us. So his goal with us is to basically just, like, he doesn't just want to, like, tweak your life and make it a little painful. His goal is to, like, utterly make your life as miserable as he possibly can. Grind you into the ground. That's his goal. Okay? And he can send thoughts to us at any time. Remember Jesus in the wilderness? You know? Hey, you're hungry. You could do that. You could turn that stuff into stone. Wouldn't that be nice? 
You know, he's putting thoughts into Jesus' head. He can send thoughts to us. You may, raise your hand if you've ever actually seen Satan. I never have either. You probably won't. The Bible doesn't t- tell us to expect to see him. But how he fights against us is he, send th- he fights at the thought level. He sends thoughts to us. And sometimes he could do it in, in a first person, too. You might think it's your own thought. You can say, ah, man, I'm always so terrible at this. I'm always, I always... And you may think, well, that was my thought because it started with I. Just because the thoughts in your mind in the first person could be from him. He's really clever, and his goal is to just destroy you. Now, his two main strategies to destroy you are this. Strategy one, isolate, tempt, destroy. That's his first strategy. Isolate, tempt, destroy. The second one is isolate, confuse, destroy. Let's do go to the first one. Isolate, tempt, destroy. Do you, do you know what the word isolate means? Raise your hand if you, if you don't know what that word means. Okay, I think Russell's the only hand. So every, most people know what the isolate. Isolate means to separate somebody from another person. Get you all alone. That's step one, because you're weaker when you're all alone. And then when you're all alone in your room or in life, maybe in a college dorm room or an apartment someday, and you're all alone, he's not going to come at you when you're at church. Nah, he ain't going to do that. But when you're all alone, then what does he do? What's step two? Tempt. Tempt. Just put, you know, just... He watches you. He's been watching you since you were a baby. So he knows the specific areas you've got a little weakness in you. He knows the bents that your, your sarks has, your parasite has. Maybe it's stealing. Maybe it's lust. Maybe it's lying. You know, maybe it's gossip. Maybe it's, um, you know, pride, just trying to be cooler than everybody else, right? We'll get to the top of the totem pole in high school, you know. Whatever it is. He knows what it is, what your weakness is, and he'll whisper little things in your ear and just kind of pull you down that road if he can. And then step three is destroy. Okay, once he, gets, he pulls you along on that temptation, then he destroys you. That's, his strategy. That's strategy number one. The second strategy is isolate, confuse, destroy. Okay, that's why he just messes, up, messes your theology up. The way you think about God, he'll mess that up. So you've got a bad, funked up image of, of who God is and what he's like, and that can mess with you. If he messes with your image of God, messes with your image of yourself, so end up not liking yourself, you know, oh man, if you're like, dang, that's like me. Well, he's probably done a job on you over the last few years, because that's literally what he does. But obviously, the, the end game is what? In both those strategies, the end game is destroy. He wants to destroy you. Um, but tonight, what I want to focus on this is this right here. What's the first step in both those strategies? Yeah, isolate. Isolate. You alone. And in particular, most of all the people he wants to isolate you from are the people right next to you. Your brothers and sisters in Christ make you so much stronger and he knows that and so like the number one people he wants to isolate you from are the people in this room these are the people in your church family who are your age and these are the people you can develop a strong bond with forge a strong relationship with and he hates that okay so he his number one strategy is to isolate you from the people here in this room so that's why we started the NF groups, right? Because it's a chance where in 20 minutes, he hates, Satan probably hates the NF time. It's just like, ah, they're going to spend time. They might actually talk about stuff and some of this temptation, this confusion, they might share it and then the other one will like help them see through it and it'll wreck my strategy. He hates that, you know? So, um, so I can't wait for the, the NF group times. So, all right, let's say it's some week that you have a lot of pain. It's just a really hard week, all right? You come here on Thursday night. What would Satan want you to do with, with that pain? Yep. Isolate. So when you get to your NF group, what do you think he's going to want you to do? You're all right. He can't keep you from getting in the group. All right, you walk, you're in your little room, it's like 20 minutes. All right, how was your week, guys? Now, you had a lot of pain. What do you think he wants you to do during that NF time? Yeah, not talk. Just don't talk about it, right? So probably what, is, what thoughts would he send you to get you to not share that? See, we're going to try to make it as easy as we can for you to be able to share. That's why it's a smaller group, right? Someone you know. You guys have picked your groups this year. But even still, Satan's not going to make it easy. What would be a thought he could send to get you to be like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't share that with them tonight? Can you think of something? Yeah, marvelous. Yeah, especially if it's a temptation. Now, we're just talking about pain. But yeah, like maybe it's pain because of something that I'm a little embarrassed about. You know, maybe I kind of brought it on myself. And now I'm really, it sucks. Like I'm in a lot of pain. I'm in a bad place. And yeah, like they're a Christian and, you know, maybe they have a Christian family and like, I don't want them, you know, I want to make them think well of me. So, so yeah, maybe I'm not gonna, I'm gonna share Like I'll share the happy stuff. 
you know, I got an A on this test. Okay. But I'm not going to share my pain. Yeah. Anybody else? What, what would be a way he'd keep you from sharing that pain? Yeah. What would happen if I said it? Yeah, okay. So send what if thoughts. I think, I think Lun is on to something. I think what if thoughts are almost always from Satan. Not all the time, but maybe, I think a lot of them, 60% maybe. Sometimes it's just you being smart, like, what if I, cross, if I cross the street, what if I get hit by a car? Okay, that's probably being just a smart what if. But a lot of what ifs are straight up forms of fear, just in a different formula. <laughs> and he can paralyze you with what ifs. So yeah, what if, what if, what will happen if I share this with that person? Yeah, good. Anybody else got one more? Pain, something that would keep you, a thought that would come to mind to keep you to say, you know what, I'm not sharing it. <laughs> I'm just going to say it was an okay week, but that's all I'm sharing. I'm not, not going to. Go ahead, Russell. That's fine, okay. All right, so what do you think, in the, so let's say it's that week you have that pain, what do you think the Holy Spirit would want you to do? Go ahead, Jalen. Or was that you that said that? Yeah, go ahead. Say, speak up. Well, what about with your pain? So you're in your NF group. It's about time to share. You've got a lot of pain from that particular week or maybe that season of life, okay? What do you think the Holy Spirit would want, want you to do? Yeah, go ahead, Lauren. Uh, share it? Share it, yeah. Share it. So he's going to be nudging you to share it and Satan's going to be nudging you to... Put it in a box. Don't, don't, just don't, don't, don't. And so this year, I want to encourage you to be brave. If you don't follow the Holy Spirit, you're not only going to hurt yourself, but you're going to hurt this group. Remember we had the tubes last week? We got one over there on the shelf. Remember the tubes? When we come together, we're putting our tubes together together. And the Holy Spirit wants to have fellowship in our midst. This is where he, he loves this. This is, this is the body of Christ, right? It's a family. And if you close yourself off, you're not only hurting yourself, but you're actually, you're actually making it harder for your brothers to connect with you. Guess what happens sometimes when we open up about something that's hard? We follow the Holy Spirit and we say it. Guess what that does to the other people in your group? What if they got something they were thinking of sharing, but they were like, nah, I can't, because they might, they might not want to hear that. And then you're the one that shares something. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be like, oh, it's going to open the floodgates. Like, it's going to make it a lot easier. It's like you're the one busting through the door first. Now the door is easy to bust through. Now somebody else in your group be like, you know what? I got the same thing going on. I didn't want to say anything. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen if you follow the Holy Spirit, and you never know what you would have missed out on if you didn't follow him some night. So my encouragement is this. Don't be afraid. Like, don't be afraid. Just be free. I'm not saying make up stuff in your NF groups, but on those nights when you have something, be free. All right. What about some week where you have a, a temptation with sin or some battle you're fighting? Like, maybe you've fallen a few times that week. Whatever the sin area was, you messed up that week. It's been a rough week on the sin front. What do you think the Satan wants you to do in your NF time? Yeah, yeah, just, just nah, we don't got to, nah, let's just move on. Don't share that. Mm -hmm. And what do you think the Holy Spirit would want you to do? Share. Now, why would the Holy Spirit want you to share that? It's not fun talking about that stuff, so why would he want you to share that? I got a verse I'm going to put up later, Galatia, or, uh, James 5.16. Share your sins with one another, it says, with your brothers in Christ, and then pray for each other so that you can be healed. When you share some area that you need strength in because you're in a fight, then when they pray for you on that area, it gives you specific boost of strength in that exact area. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you have those temptations, follow the Spirit, share it with a brother, and guess what? They might open up and share something with you then. And take somebody to, to be the leader, though, and follow the Spirit first. How about if you have some victory or joy in your week? I think you guys get the hang of this. If you got something happy to happen, share it with your brothers. Satan just wants to get you to not share much in your group. Just keep it real shallow. How was my week? It was fine. I hope over the course of this year you get sick of hearing answers like, I was fine. 
And in fact, if your sister in Christ gives you an answer that's, well, it's fine, but you can tell, look into her eyes. And if you can tell it wasn't fine, you grab her and say, nah, you tell me about how it really was. You kind of push her a little bit, okay? Or your brother in Christ, like, it was fine, but you can tell something is there. Push them a little bit. Stretch each other. Push, push each other and push yourself to go deeper. So, all right, uh, the format of the NF groups this week is going to be, or this, this year is going to be a little different. Last year, last year we started the NF groups with grab one time. We're not going to do that. Um, we're gonna, but we're still going to do grab one time. I'm just going to do, at the end of every sermon, there's going to be a song that plays. It's a three-minute song, four-minute song. And during that song time right here, that's going to be the grab one time. So you'll have your sheets and you can pick something from the message to grab a hold of, either a truth to thank God for, a promise, um, something to, to, to change or adjust in your life. And you'll, you'll pick one of the grab one times while you're in here. Then in your NF times, um, it's, it's even simpler. It was pretty simple last year, but it'll be even simpler this year. It's just going to be share and then prayer. Okay? So for some of you guys, for the new sixth graders, this will be newer, but um, it's pretty simple. The, for the share time, you're going to share one positive from your week and one negative. Okay? So that's pretty simple. One thing that was challenging and one thing that, that you're grateful for, one thing that was good. Okay? Now the, the negative might not be, you know, it could be anything. It's wide ranging, you know. Um, it, it could be any of the things I just mentioned some pain you've got or something that hard that happened or some, some temptation that, that you're, some sin that you're battling with. Um, and then the positive could be anything positive. That's it, you just share. And then, uh, and then you're going to pray for each other. Ask, ask how you can pray for one another and get a prayer request. Pray for each other. So, all right, our verse for today and for, for this message is Ecclesiastes 4. Two are better than one. Check that out. It's, I think that's the main verse that we've got. I got a couple of ones. This is the main verse for tonight. Two are better than one, all right? Because they got a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But how terrible it is, check that out. How terrible it would be for someone who falls and has no one to help him up. Two are better than one. Let's think about that right there, this phrase. If one falls down, what, what, what would be a way of falling down? What might that mean? You think it's talking about like literally falling down? No, I don't think so. Of course, I mean, it could apply to that. If you're walking with somebody on a road and you've got your friend with you and you like trip and break your ankle, they are going to help you up. I remember, I remember the first um, week that you girls were here and um, I think Kamora twisted, twisted your ankle, so... Um, she had friends, right? People were like lifting you up, not even helping. They were like carrying you up out of there. That was nice, right? It's nice to have friends when you fall. Um, did, who had their hand up? Somebody was going to say something yeah. back there? Yeah, go ahead. Sin? Yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, fall. I fell into sin this week. Well, if you've got an NF group, if you've got a brother in Christ, that week he can pick you up. How does he pick you up? Yeah, by praying for you. Only if you share it, of course. But you see how that works? If one falls down, the other can help him up. Maybe it's not sin. Can you think of another area where you might have fallen during that week? Maybe it wasn't sin, but... How about, uh, how about having like, time with God? <laughs> Getting your quiet times and your time talking with God that week or listening to God. How, what does it look like to fall in that during the week? <laughs> yeah, you had a goal and you were like, I haven't had my quiet times once this week. How can, your, how can your NF partner pick you up if you fall that way? They can pray for you. Let me pray God give you strength. Let me text you or remind you. How can I help you? How can I get you back up? How can I support you? See that? Two are better than one. Or maybe, it's, maybe another way you can fall is you fall out of fellowship. So maybe, what, what does falling out of fellowship mean? It's like I'm not coming. I'm not coming to to group anymore. Or maybe I, you know, I miss a couple weeks. Well, if you don't have an NF partner and you miss a couple weeks, who's going to pick you up? <laughs> I mean, maybe the pastor, or maybe one of the leaders that noticed. But what if you got an NF partner and you start missing a couple weeks? What? How? How can they pick you up? Yeah, they can text you. What'd you say? 
could, they could call you. Do you guys call each other? Do you call your friends ever? Rachel, have you ever call your friend like on the phone, like actually a voice call? Okay, people still do call. I know people message nowadays, but okay. You FaceTime? Yeah. I mean, hopefully you guys, you know, we're going to do that later tonight. You're going to have a chance to, to swap contacts with, with the person in your group. But yeah, you fall out of fellowship. Hey, what's going on? Been missing you. Don't be slack. Are you slacking off? Get in their face a little bit. That's your sister in Christ. Get in their face. Pick them up a little bit when they need it. Their brother, if you're a brother in Christ, you are your brother's keeper. You are your sister's keeper. Okay, it's not you and Jesus. This is a family. All right, we pick each other up. And then some week you might need them to do that for you. All right. All right, I got my little, uh, the, the verse goes on and talks about strings. Even though one person can be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And finally, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. So I got my little analogy here. Let's say this is, uh, who should, we? Let's, say, let's say this is you right here. All right, this is your NF partner. All right, you by yourself, what does it say? Two are better than one, right? Because what's, what's wrong with one? I mean, Satan can easily break you. If you're a Lone Ranger Christian, and some of you guys are born with Lone Ranger tendencies, you can't help that. You're going to have to really work against that. Some of you, like, it's, you're extremely uncomfortable even being with one other person and talking. Like, you, you know, so you're going to have to really work because otherwise, look it, you're just, you're just easy prey, right? But two are better than one. Let me take a purple one again. Now, this is you again, but now you've got an NF partner, okay? You've got one sister or brother in Christ once a week that you're spending time with. You can, now, let's say the first couple of weeks, maybe you didn't, you haven't like, let's say every time you actually like share something with your life or spend time with them, it's like you twist up the strings, okay? It gets tighter. Your relationship gets tighter. So that will be more like this, you know? But let's say week one, Especially for those who got new NF partners this year. Some of you guys, it's the same ones as last year, so your, your cord's are already pretty tight. But let's say it's brand new, all right? You're like week one. You don't know each other that well. Is it, you think I can break it? Yeah. I mean, let me put, let me say, let me try. It's definitely harder than when, by itself, but I can still break it, okay? But now, if you actually... Open yourself up to them every week that you share something like, you know what, this was an amazing thing that happened. I'm going to tell the people in my NF group. I'm going to celebrate with them. And, and you do that. That's you're twisting it up a little bit more. Or, or you had a struggle in your week and you share that with them. You're twisting it up a little bit more. And the more you twist up that relationship, you think I can break this one? Maybe. I'm going to try. Let's see. All right, who here thinks they're real strong? Uh, let's let's come on, if, come on, let's come on, right? All right, you try. Let's see what you can see if you can do it. This is you when you got an NF partner and you're opening yourself up to them. All right. Yeah. Just keep the twisties. You can do it however you want. Come on, girl. <laughs> Can't do it. Somebody else want to try? How about we got a big strong guy who wants to try it? I kind of hope you can't do it because then it's like Satan can break us even like wreck the analogy. But all right, come on. Come on, Jaden. Let's go. Come on, you got this. Break it. Put your back into it. Put your all right, turn around though so they can see. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, that's a redo. I'm going to tell you why that's a redo. We're gonna, here's why it's a redo. Because, because uh, he put his, he, he went, he didn't pull it like this. He pulled it like individually like this so that they're not twisted up to get the twist power that they got you got to pull them with some twists in between okay. all right so try again here i'll twist this back up all right twist it up twist it up a little bit i'm gonna twist it up a lot i'm trying to wreck my illustration Jaden. no i'm just kidding that's pretty good all right turn around let's see one more time one more time All right, good job, good job. All right, thank you, Jane. Let's give him a hand. So you're starting off like this, okay? I've got you the partner. I put you together with them, but it's up to you if you're going to twist up. I hope you do twist up because two are better than one. And guess what? Our fellowship as a church family is important too. It's important that you have small group fellowship, but it's also big group fellowship 
Because when, when you come together as a big group, we put all of our strings together, all right? And, uh, and it turns like this. Let's see if I can get in here. We got the... This is... Now you know why Satan hates NF groups. What Jaden just did is why Satan hates NF groups. It makes you strong. But this is why Satan hates church families. Because we, we come together. Now, does anybody want to try to break this one? Come on up. Come on, give it a try. Actually, I got a laptop. No, I ain't trying that. You think Satan can break a local church? Nah, he ain't going to try to do that. That's why his strategy is always isolate. Isolate. If he can get these strings away from each other, if he can get you to stop coming to Thursdays, if he can get you to stop coming to Sundays, if he can get you to stop meeting with your NF partner, he can break you. But if you stay close to your brothers in Christ, if you stay close to your church family, he can't break you. A cord, see it right there, scripture, a cord of three strands is not only easily broken. All right. All right, so what we're going to do now is um, you're going to take, um, I'm going to give you three minutes because we're a little, we got a late start, so we're a little after time. Three minutes, connect with your NF partner. You're not going to do share a prayer. You're going to stay in this room, and all you're going to do is this. Um, find some way that you can be in touch with each other when you're not here. Let's say one of you is not here for a week. So find some social media platform or it could just be texting, swap phone numbers. Just one. I don't want you to find like, okay, let's, get be, let's match up on Instagram. Let's go on Messenger and swap phone numbers and addresses and smoke signals. Just one. Find one, one form that you can connect with each other. Because some of you, you know, maybe, maybe you don't have, I know some people in this room don't have Facebook, so you're not going to be able to use Messenger. Okay? So maybe just, but... And, and now with everybody in your room, just with your NF partner, okay? Everybody know what you're going to do and, and connect on there. Get, swap your things, and, uh, and then I'm going to give you a, a challenge. So, okay, uh, yeah, Marvelous, you got a question? That's okay, that's okay. Do you, you know your number? Or you know, uh, come up with a plan. Get together with your guy. All right, you guys all know what you're doing? Yep. I'm gonna give you, I'll give you three minutes. You, want, you shouldn't need more than three minutes. You probably do it in two minutes. All right, stay right here, but meet, go walk around and be by your partner and get your connection. All right. Good job, guys. Good job. All right. So here's my, uh, my closing uh, challenge, and then I want to ask you for a commitment. My challenge is simple. My challenge is push yourself a little this year to open up your heart to, the, to whoever your NF partner is. Okay, push yourself a little bit. Um, if you do that and you open yourself up, you'll get stronger, but then our group will get stronger as well. So I, I want to push you to do, encourage you to do that. So I got a question for you, and I want you to answer honestly. Um, hopefully, you're sitting with your partner. Are you sitting with them? For, for those that have, what's that? All right. Okay. All right. So here's. So I want you to have them in mind. You all know who your partners are, right? All right. So here's. I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to them. Will you commit to your partner this year to list? First one is: Will you commit to listen to them, like for real, listen to them? Okay, if you'll commit to that, I want you to stand up. If you'll really listen to, the person, to your partner. All right, you can have a seat. You can have a seat. All right, will you commit? You're going to get some exercise here, so get your legs ready. <laughs> will you commit to be safe for them? Don't stand yet. What I mean by be safe for them is when they do share something, like what I said, like a sin that they really, like the real stuff, like something actually going on that's hard that I need prayer for. And they actually do have the, take the courage to share it. Will you be safe for them? Meaning you're not going to judge them, okay? You're going to support them. If that's you, if you'll do that, by God's grace, if you'll do that, stand up. If you'll try to do that for your partner. Okay, you can sit down. All right. Will you commit to pray for them at least, listen to this, don't make a commitment lightly. Pray for them at least once a week during your NF time. Now it's in the NF time, share in prayer. But will you commit to doing that every week for them, if not more during the week? Maybe you could do it more during the week. But at least, I want you to make a commitment to do, I'm asking you to make a commitment to do at least once a week during your NF times, you will pray for your partner. If you'll do that, stand up. Okay, you can sit down. The next one is this. When they miss a week, right? Link's partner is gone this week. 
Some of you guys, your partner's gone. Marvelous partner is not here. Now you don't have your contact. You might not be able to do this right now unless you're already connected with them. But once you get their contact and you get a platform that you connect with, when they miss a week, will you check on them? Yes. Will you check on them? If that's you, by God's grace, you will try to check on them. Stand up. If you'll make that commitment to your partner. Not to the whole group. This is a commitment to your partner. All right, have a seat. And the last one is on the weeks that either one of you are not going to be here, okay, so maybe you miss and you're at home because you've got something going on, will you reach out to your partner and ask them how you can pray for them that week? Even when you can't be here in, per in person, I'll reach out and I'll ask them if they got anything because maybe this was their hard week and I missed on them, so let me reach out and ask. If you'll commit to doing that, to reaching out and asking if, how you can pray for them when either you're not here or they're not here, stand up. Okay. All right, good. All right. Um, so uh, the commitment to, to your partner starts tonight. And if you guys will follow through with that commitment, if God gives you the grace to follow through, it'll be exciting to see what God does. I think we'll be a much stronger group at the end of the year than we are tonight starting off. So but guess what? To do that, to keep any of those commitments, you're going to need God's grace. And to get his grace, we need to pray for it. So um, we've got some leaders here um, that are going to pray for us. So what I want you to do is I want you to sit next to your partner if they're here. Sit, sit next to them. I want, actually, I want the girls on this side and the guys on this side because that's what make things easier for me. And all the leaders, if you come up here if you're a leader, and then I'm going to give you a group to pray for. So sit next to your partner and, and the leaders are going to come over and, and pray with you. Pastor Key, if you and the other leaders, you could come up here and I'll, I'll divide, I'll divvy up. Yeah, just right now so I can divide you, to, divide you to the group. So, okay. All right. Um, so let's see. We've got a couple. Uh, yeah, Lon and Caleb. Okay. Um, Jim, could you pray for Lon and Caleb? Don't start, but you just go stand over by, by them. Yep, Lon, that's Lon and Caleb. Um, let's see. Let's see. Where's Noah? And Miles. Oh, okay. And Aiden and Jalen. Oh, okay. Oh, here to come. All right. So Aiden, Jaden, uh, Jalen, Miles, Noah, go, you guys all sit back there in the back. Dave, could you go and take that group? Okay. Don't pray yet. You can just get each other's names if you don't. Okay. So Dave's got them. Jim's got Lon and Caleb. 